There was no doubt that the traffic violation was flagrant. There wasn't even an attempt made to hide it. The man just simply blew right through the stoplight. No caution whatsoever. He was spotted by an officer who quickly gave pursuit. But the man continued to drive on. And when he saw those lights behind him, knowing that he had been at least seen, he started swerving around cars, passing in a no-passing zone. Speeds got to be way beyond the speed limit, got to be just simply downright dangerous. What he had forgotten was that officers have these things called radios. And so they had radioed ahead and set up a roadblock. They had pinned him in, and finally he was stopped. He got out of his car, and then it became obvious that alcohol was playing a huge part in his behavior. The man was arrested. He was tried. He was found guilty. He was convicted. At his sentencing, the judge threw the book at him. He had looked back through the man's record and discovered that this was repeat after repeat, time after time. The man was just flagrantly violating the law in so many different ways. And the judge said, enough. This is enough. This time there will be punishment. And so when the day of sentencing came, the judge threw the proverbial book at him. That man received a stiff and severe sentence. The man knew of his guilt, but he couldn't believe the severity of what he considered punishment. Then the judge stood up. The judge stood up from the bench over which he had presided in the trial and in the sentencing. The judge took off his black robe, laid it over his chair, he stepped down from the bench and he said to the guilty man who he had just sentenced, I'll take your place. I will do your time. I will take your punishment. You're free to go. Don't get your hopes up because that's not the way it works. If you're drinking and driving and running stop signs and ignoring the law, it probably isn't going to work that way. Our society says, you do the crime, you do the time. That's what society says. And it's not just society that says it. As a whole, we can't blame it on this nebulous thing called society because you and I say the same thing. Each of us has said that at times. If you do this, there's punishment because of it. We may say, she's not going to get away with that. Or he should be in jail for that. That kid should be thrown out of school because of behavior like that. You and I, with our human nature, want punishment for something that has been done that's wrong. We may say we want justice, but in reality what we're asking for is revenge. Let's somehow get even with this person. Let's balance things with this person that has been so flagrantly illegal. We want punishment. And we will say it softly, we'll say it loudly. You do the crime, you do the time. There is one exception to that. And that's when it happens to be our own sin, our own flagrant disobedience. Then we don't want anybody to take revenge. We want mercy, we want forgiveness, we want grace, and we want whoever we sinned against to have a very, very short memory so that they don't remember what it is we've done. Thinking that just maybe, just maybe, we could get off scot-free. If our king, if our lord, were to give us justice, if he were to give us what we deserve, 
you and I wouldn't stand a chance. Not a chance. When it's someone else's sin, we'll cry for justice. But when it's our sin, oh my, we beg, we cry for mercy. Isaiah captured the words of our Lord when our Lord said, My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways. Think of the scales of justice. Think of the scales of justice. There they are, balanced, even, everything seemingly in good harmony. Then throw your sins onto one of those trays on the scale and watch it tip. It goes way out of balance. Something's wrong and we're the cause of it. Our sins weigh things down. Our sins weigh us down. Our sins throw things off. No matter how much good we do, we can't bring that balance back up. We can't compensate for that. We can't bring things back into harmony. We can't bring things back to level. No matter how much we would like to pay or do to compensate for that, we can't. Sin is a sin. It's committed, and we can't pull it back. Remember the words of our Lord through Isaiah? For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways. God is our judge. He is the one before whom we stand. He is the one by whom we are convicted. We are given a sentence right along with Adam and Eve long time ago in that garden when they disobeyed. And the sentence, the sentence is that this life for us will end. Death comes for each of us, just as it did for Adam and Eve. Paul, in his letter to the Christians at Rome, gives us these verses. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The very Son of God has been given as a sacrifice for your sins and mine. No revenge no punishment. God himself steps off the judicial bench and takes our punishment and sets us free. We are released from the bondage of those sins that haunt us, those sins that we're so good at, those sins that we so willingly commit. We are set free. And the Son of God, Jesus the Christ, he goes to the cross to die for you and for me. And you and I, you and I are free to go. Lord, we fear punishment for what we've done. We admit our wrongs. We admit our sins. We acknowledge our guilt. By your grace and through your mercy, you provide us with both. You grant us forgiveness when we deserve punishment. You give us freedom when we have bound ourselves so firmly to sin. For the gift of freedom, we give you thanks. For the sacrifice of your Son, we give you thanks. And for the, the newness of each day ahead, 
we offer you our heartfelt gratitude.